I think if you're working with a small amount of money, you know, I think you can make very significant sums, but you, but as soon as you start getting the money up into the millions, many millions, the curve on expectable results falls off just dramatically. The famous investor Warren Buffett follows the value investing philosophy of Benjamin Graham. According to this paradigm, value investors look for stocks whose prices seem disproportionately low given their inherent value. Here we will see the method of investing a small amount of money and gaining a lot. Let's dive deeper. There is no widely acknowledged methodology for determining intrinsic worth, although it is frequently determined by carefully examining a company's fundamentals. By using this analytical method, investors might find stocks that the market may be undervaluing or that most people are overlooking. Buffett, on the other hand, takes value investing to an entirely new level. Buffett and many value investors disagree with the proponents of the efficient market hypothesis who contend that stocks always trade at their fair value. Because of their mistrust in the efficient market hypothesis, investors find it difficult to find cheap stocks or to profit from inflated prices when selling. Value investors, however, continue to have faith in the market's propensity to finally uncover the genuine worth of high-quality firms that may have been discounted for a while. Buffett emphasizes a careful analysis of a company's fundamentals in his own take on value investing. This entails examining financial documents closely, analyzing competitive advantages, and rating the caliber of management. Value investors look for differences between a stock market price and intrinsic value by examining these specifics. Their careful research enables them to make well-informed choices which frequently deviate from the attitude of the market. According to Buffett, the key to long-term success is finding businesses with strong management and sustainable competitive advantages. The conviction that there are market inefficiencies sets value investors apart from those who support the efficient market hypothesis. Value investors argue that mispricing and irrationality still exist, despite the EMH's assertion that stock prices currently take into account all available information. As a result, shrewd investors like Buffett Buffett will have more opportunity to profit from market inefficiencies by purchasing cheap stocks with the expectation that their actual value will eventually be realized. Contrarianism is also necessary in value investing. Buffett's ability to defy the current tendencies in the market is often the source of his success. While most people might go toward well-known stocks, value investors look for chances in undervalued or neglected businesses. It may take some time for the market to adjust its perception to see the inherent worth of these investments, therefore patience is required when using this contrarian strategy. Buffett stands out from short-term traders due to his long-term outlook. Benjamin Graham's ideas serve as an inspiration for value investors who place more emphasis on a company's long-term intrinsic value and less emphasis on cyclical market swings. This methodical approach is consistent with the conviction that when the market corrects itself, smart investments will eventually pay off. The investment philosophies of Warren Buffett are a shining example of practicality and long-term thinking. Buffett adopts a more composed stance than many investors who become obsessed with the daily fluctuations of the stock market. This viewpoint is captured in his well-known translation of Benjamin Graham's words, In the short run, the market is a voting machine, but in the long run, it is a weighing machine. This illustrates his conviction that while the market may fluctuate in the near run due to public opinion, a company's genuine worth will ultimately be determined by its financial foundation. According to Buffett, the key is to see every business as a whole, not just as a group of stocks. His selection criteria are based on recognizing businesses that have exceptional potential, not just in terms of stock price, but also as thriving enterprises that may provide significant profits. Investing for long-term capital gains is fundamentally different from Buffett's approach. He looks to invest in high-quality firms that have a strong track record of producing profits over the long term. He's not interested in following market trends or riding the highs and lows of stock prices. This strategy is a monument to his unshakable trust in the underlying value of enterprises. Buffett doesn't worry about whether the market will quickly assess a company's value when making investments. His assessment of a company's ability to turn a profit and remain a viable corporation is his primary area of concentration. Buffett's emphasis on a company's long-term survival is a reflection of his deep understanding of business dynamics, not just a calculated strategic move. 
He sees equities as ownership holdings in living, breathing beings rather than just pieces of paper that may be purchased and sold. For Buffett, it's about having a stake in businesses that have long-term attributes. He looks for companies that can weather economic cycles and produce a steady profit, not just ones that are trendy for a short while. Short-term voting trends may influence the market, but Buffett's strategy is like waiting for the results of a weighing machine with patience. In addition to helping him weather market turbulence, this mindset has cemented his place as one of the greatest investors in history. It serves as a reminder that amidst the din of the market, investing is really all about the long-term value that a firm provides. Over the past 20 years, the investment world has changed significantly, and low-cost index funds like the S&P 500 have become more and more popular. There are several reasons for this change, but cost-effectiveness is the main one. Comparing index funds to many mutual funds, Investing in them turns out to be more cost-effective because of the lower fees and decreased trading activity. Exchange-traded funds ETFs, the preferred investment vehicle for index funds, come with additional tax benefits. The year 2007 was a turning point in the recognition of index funds' superiority over active management, as stated by Warren Buffett. Buffett made a significant wager with protege partners by choosing the Vanguard Index Fund to be a stand-in for the S&P 500. Between January 1, 2008 and December 31, 2017, there was a 10-year bet that matched the S&P 500 against a portfolio of five hedge funds of funds. The result was spectacular. The S&P Index Fund returned an astounding 125.8%, dwarfing the average return of the hedge funds, which was only 36.3% after fees. Buffett emphasized the impact of high hedge fund managers' fees in a 2017 letter to shareholders. He also provided a simple equation that said, whichever group has the lower costs will win. This wise counsel makes sense, especially in light of Wall Street's handling of trillions of assets, where managers frequently profit more from excessive fees than from clients. Buffett made a clear recommendation to all investors, big and small, stay with low-cost index funds. This recommendation from Buffett confirms a belief that has been understood by wise investors for almost a century, but it took some time for the general investor to become aware of it. Active money managers don't always perform well. After monitoring the performance of active managers for more than 20 years, Standard & Poor's said in their mid-year 2022 report that, after adjusting for fees and funds that leave the market due to subpar performance, 84% of large-cap actively managed fund managers underperform their benchmark after five years. After a decade, this underperformance grows to a frightening 90%. Standard & Poor's observed in a 2019 survey that active managers' performance was worse than would be expected from luck. Such dreadful performance has a variety of causes. Any possible outperformance is eroded by high fees and frequent trading, a prevalent practice among fund managers, compounds investing errors, and may increase one's tax liability. The majority of trading that takes place nowadays is between experts, which presents another difficulty. Armed with comparable equipment and data, these traders frequently don't have large informational edge over their rivals. Low-cost index funds are appealing to investors looking for a dependable and economical method, as evidenced by Buffett's support for them. Acknowledging the drawbacks of active management, most notably the high costs, excessive trading, and lack of informational advantage, fits with a larger pattern in the world of investing. Buffett's insight is a lighthouse as we traverse the intricacies of the financial markets, encouraging both experienced and inexperienced investors to take into account the strong advantages of inexpensive index funds. In a world where trillions are handled by those charging exorbitant fees, aligning with Buffett's stance becomes not simply a smart choice, but a strategic one for anyone looking to achieve long-term financial success. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed watching our content, then do like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to comment your thoughts below.